Hello, Father's Faithful. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. When you pray, please pray for Jit's sister and brother. Pray for Cynthia and David. And pray for John Taylor, Kemp, a young man who has just been diagnosed with diabetes. Pray for Nicholas and pray for Charlie and Priscilla. Pray for Pastor Larry and the new Pastor Larry who's coming to our church soon. Pray for Bethel Church and the Father's Faithful. What do you think about this? What if I said, I have a job for you? Does that get you a little excited? Or do you do what Ben sometimes does when I say that to him? He kind of rolls his eyes because he thinks it's going to be another technology job. But what if I say that I have this great job for you, I want you to go over and tell those children that recess is over and they need to come inside right now. Now, they may not be happy with you. They might even yell at you because they're having a good time. But I want you to tell them anyway. And thanks for helping. Well. Believe it or not, this reminds me of my regular Bible reading this week from the book of Ezekiel, when the Lord called him to be a prophet. You know, wake-up calls used to be common when we traveled. We could call the hotel's front desk and tell them when we wanted a call to wake us up. And then the next morning, the phone would ring and we would be on time for whatever we had planned for that day. Sometimes wake-up calls come in other forms. Maybe our boss telling us that one more mistake we make and we're fired. Or a wake-up call we might get when we start to flunk out of school or have an accident and a near brush with death. Sometimes we are awakened in the middle of the night by a knock on the door or a phone ringing or a child crying or an animal prowling or by a dream. Such was Ezekiel in chapter 1. Actually, he was awakened by this vision directly from the Lord, and he was actually standing in the presence of the Lord. It put him flat on his face, in fact, when the Lord called him. I wonder if there is anything these days that would cause us to fall flat on our face, prostrate before the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 10 is the scripture for today. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified of them, though they are a rebellious people. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like that rebellious people. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Then I looked and I saw a hand stretched out to me, and it was a scroll, which he unrolled before me. On both sides of it were written words of lament and mourning and woe. Did you get the message that Ezekiel was called to prophesy to people who were rebellious and obstinate? The first thing the Lord tells Ezekiel to do is to stand up. If you read chapter 1 of Ezekiel, you will find that the Lord has just sent Ezekiel this message through this vision. And it was awesome and it was powerful. And it was a little scary too. 
And like we mentioned before, Ezekiel fell flat on his face before the Lord. But he says to him in chapter 2, stand up on your feet. God, like an army sergeant, was giving Ezekiel an order, attention. I want you to hear what I'm going to say. I want you to be fully alert because you are about to receive orders. And then he says to Ezekiel, listen up. I will speak to you. And as he spoke to him, the spirit of the Lord entered Ezekiel and he stood straight up and he listened to the one who was speaking to him. It was God's way of saying, now that I have your attention, listen to me. I have something that I want you to hear. I'm going to say something important. It's kind of like when I was teaching school and teaching young children, I might say, put on your listening ears. I don't want you to miss my instructions. And then he tells Ezekiel to go up. He says, son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites. What God was saying is, this task that I'm calling you to do requires action. Now, if you know the background of Ezekiel's story, he is with his people. He is actually an exile in Babylon. The people of Israel have been sent to Babylon under King Nebuchadnezzar because they have been obstinate and rebellious and they have refused to obey God. So Ezekiel is not among people who he doesn't know. There's no language barrier. He is actually called to speak to the people of God, and yet they are rebellious and they are disobedient. So it's going to be hard. Sometimes the people you know the best are the hardest ones to speak to about God. But God calls him and he says, go and speak to these people. There is always an action component to the call of God. Rarely can we stay where we are and do what we've always done. There is a call of God upon our lives, and usually that means there's a call to action too. The next thing he tells Ezekiel is to speak up. Again, he emphasizes these children of God are obstinate. They're hard-hearted, and I'm sending you to them, and you must say to them, this is what the Lord God says, whether they listen or whether they refuse to listen. And God says, I have a message for my people, and your job is is to deliver that message, whether they listen or not, whether you are afraid or not. You know, God's truth is not dependent on human response. God would not judge Ezekiel on how well those children of Israel responded to the message, but on how faithful he was in presenting God's message. He was a spokesperson for God. He was his mouthpiece. And in chapter 3, we find out that Ezekiel is also appointed as a watchman over the house of Israel. A watchman stood on the city wall and warned people of approaching danger. Ezekiel's role was actually to be the spiritual watchman, warning people of the coming judgment. He tells Ezekiel to open his mouth then and eat what I'm giving you. He actually talks about eating the scroll with God's word on it. I find it interesting that Ezekiel's name means God is strong or God makes strong. And for him to be strong enough to listen and obey the word of God and to be the Lord's spokesperson, he needed to feed on the nourishment of God's word because the word of God is life-giving. Just like we need food for our physical lives, we need God's Word for our spiritual lives too. And when we digest God's Word, we find that not only does it make us stronger, but it makes us wiser too. This means doing more than simply glancing through that bakery window at those succulent treats. We have to actually partake. We have to eat of God's Word. And that means making God's Word a part of our lives, like eating a balanced diet that sustains us and nourishes our health and makes us productive in our lives. This was Ezekiel's call at the age of around 30 years old to be a prophet. 
He knew it was not going to be easy, but this is what the Lord was calling him to do. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what in the world does that have to do with me? I am not a prophet. I am not called to the mission field. I don't want to be a pastor. So what is the point? In the movies, the Blues Brothers, a couple of ex-convict wannabe musicians, were trying to raise money for an orphanage. And any time they were asked about their work, they had the standard response. We're on a mission from God. They always said it like they believed it. And the very idea that these two inept, unworthy human beings could be on a mission from God was the central joke of the whole story. Well, here's the story of your life. You are on a mission from God. God is calling you. His calls are not exclusive just to pastors and missionaries. He calls the rest of us, too, to serve Him in His kingdom. He calls plumbers. He calls electricians. He calls doctors and lawyers and teachers and chemists and engineers and salespeople and homemakers. He calls some to secular vocations and others to sacred vocations. A calling is not reserved to just people who go into full-time Christian service. Now, we don't hear that much about callings anymore, maybe because our society is educated to think in terms of a career. A calling is something God chooses for me. I may choose my own career, but a calling is something that He chooses for me. A career may promise me power and money, but a calling is an opportunity to serve God and make a difference in His kingdom. A career may be over for some of us who choose to retire, but a calling is not over until the day God calls us home and takes us to heaven where we'll spend eternity. The rewards of a career may be temporary, but the results of a calling may not even be seen on this side of eternity. In the 11th century, King Henry III of Bavaria grew tired of court life and the pressures of being the king and being a monarch. And he made this application to Prior Richard at the local monastery and asked him if he would accept him as a monk. And he wanted to spend the rest of his days in the monastery. Prior Richard said, Your Majesty, do you understand that the pledge here is one of obedience, and that will be hard for you because you've been king. And King Henry said, I understand the rest of my life I will be obedient to you as Christ leads you. Then I will tell you what to do, said Prior Richard. Go back to your throne and serve faithfully in the place where God has put you. And when King Henry died, a statement was written, the king learned to rule by being obedient. Ezekiel was obedient to the call of God upon his life. Now the question is for us, are we being obedient to the call of God in our lives? Are you being obedient? God can actually turn your career into a calling too. Sometimes the end of a career is the beginning of a calling. At other times, God chooses to take people out of the security of their careers and call them into Christian ministry. Maybe you haven't thought about this or haven't thought about this like this, but God has placed a calling on your life too. No matter where you are, no matter what your age is, the Lord is calling you, and maybe you can serve Him through your job. Maybe you can serve Him better if you will step away from that job and open your life and your heart to Him so that He can direct you in what He wants you to do, where He wants you to go, what He wants you to say, and who He wants you to say it to. Remember, you are not responsible for the results of your words and your calling in this life. The Lord will do that. He just wants you to be faithful. I pray that the Lord will lead you to clearly know what your mission and your calling is in this life and that you will listen and obey just like Ezekiel did. 
Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your holy word that leads us and guides us in the direction that you would have us go. Lord, we pray that we'll be faithful in our calling, our mission. Lord, we know that you have a plan and a purpose for our lives, and I pray that you would just help us to be receptive and obedient. Lord, we pray for those we mentioned by name today. There are so many who are hurting, who are sick, who need your traveling mercies. Lord, there are so many who just need your arms around them for comfort and for peace. Lord, I pray they'll feel your presence right now. Lord, I pray for Bethel Church. I pray that we will continue to be faithful in our service to you. Lord, we are thankful for your faithfulness to us, and we pray you will forgive our sins, draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School today. I hope you are listening and obeying this week. The Lord is calling, and we need to answer His call. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week.